Welcome to the David Ofula YouTube channel, the official home of politics, where we cover policy, war, cataclysmic world events, and traverse territory that our peers fear to tread upon. Alright, here are today's top stories in our What in the World segment. Number one, the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee has approved the creation of 22 positions for the CAS as Chief Administrative Secretaries. Now here's what this means moving forward. Number one, initially there were 50 who were proposed by the President and they even went to State House. They gave their oath of office in front of the President. It was a whole ceremony. But now of that original number of 50, 28 proposed CSs are going to be knocked off the list despite being proposed by the president. And because of that, of the 28 who will ultimately have to be axed, because there's only 22 legal positions, of those 28 who are going to be axed, I anticipate that at least 5 will be scorned and ultimately turn on the national government. That's just how politics is. And if you look at who is going to get those positions, who is not, it's all about who has been true to the government and who has not. There are those who, much as they've not been CASs, they failed to clinch the position because of legal battles and whatnot. They've remained steadfast in supporting the president and the deputy president in their agendas. There's others who have been bashing them. There's others who have been doing things which can bring embarrassment to the national government. So there's factors which they're going to look into to determine who is going to still make it on the list. I expect people like Kitumbi to be there. I expect people like Waruguru to be there. I don't know about Millicent Omanga if she'll make the list. Let's wait and see. There's quite a number of people. We'll have to wait and see who makes the list ultimately. Second story of the day. The United States has decided to take the right direction by calling the Haiti gangs to the discussion table. All along I've been saying this is the right move. Let the gangs form a government. He who has power ought to take it. Let them take the power. Let them form the national government. Let us see if they can do what they have been claiming other governments can't. They know how to carry weapons. They know how to kill leaders. They know how to use witchcraft. It's the highest in the world in Haiti. But do they know how to collect taxes? Do they know how to maintain foreign relations with the rest of the world? Do they know how to win the people over and maintain their support over a long term period? If they can, well and good, let them form the government. If they can't, it'll be egg knock on their faces because it'll probably be another gang which does not agree with the gang that was handed power and they're going to be trying to remove them and the battle continues and continues. And if that is the case, that will justify a military intervention to wipe out whichever gang it is that's continuing to cause chaos to the last man because this has to come to an end eventually and uh, we're hoping this move of bringing these cartels to the discussion table is going to end this. We saw how... Afghanistan was a war-ridden country, but the Taliban have formed government and the country is okay. You can get a visa today and go to Afghanistan. Provided you don't break their laws, you can go there, do what you need to do and leave. So this is a better move. It is way better than thousand Kenyans going there to try and fight these gangs who have been born to fight for years and years and years and it's probably what they're going to die doing. Third and final story of the day, Ali Hassan Joho, as time goes by, he seems to be a very serious contender for the ODM ticket in 2027. There's Joho, there's Oparanya, and there's Babu Owino. Babu Owino wants to go for governor in Nairobi. Oparanya just wants to be party leader. He's not ambitious enough to go for anything in the national scene. But Joho is making strides towards becoming the ODM flag bearer in 2027. And I've always maintained all along that that will mean Joho being Kalonzo's deputy. A dynamic duo that's destined to lose the elections. One cannot communicate effectively, the other can, but he has a stain where Saitoti came out to say he's a drug dealer. So Rigadi is going to really hammer these guys. I don't think Ruto will even do much work. He will just be going around selling his manifesto. Rigadi will be the one executing the onslaught as we approach 2027. But having said that, guys, that's just my opinion. Do let me know your own comments in the comment section below, especially who you think will make the list for the CSS and who you believe is going to be left out 
And what are the reasons for making it and being left out? I'll do my best to read your comments and to give you a response. In the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula. Hit the subscribe button, you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Alright guys, adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.